We're live. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody else. We are <clears throat> live on Team Bonus Action, bringing you a, another session of Bonus Roundtable, our uh, little sitting around shooting the shit podcast series. <laughs> Uh, tonight we have me hosting the fray. Uh, we also have Nero and ah, stuff started playing on my ah, stuff started playing in my ear. Sorry. Uh, we have Miro, we have Nate, and we have Spencer. And we m might have uh, Emily rolled in jumping in at some point. And, uh, whoa, excuse me, <laughs> that's a great start. Uh, tonight, our our uh, subject matter will be bad habits of D&D &D and other RPGs. So we're going to basically talk about what bad habits do you have as a player or as a DM or both. You know, things you keep falling into doing or things that come back to bite you in the butt later because you keep doing them or tropes that you continually fall into. Is anything you see is something is a bad habit of yours. So I am going to actually roll a die to see who goes first. And we're going to go with Nathan. Hello. All right. Well, bad habits. I mean, what what's uh, something I, I suffer from? I guess is a uh, grimdark syndrome. If that makes sense. Always got to go dark and gritty with it. I guess, you know, I've always enjoyed, like, the Witcher series. I love the books. I love Warhammer, obviously. You know, Skyrim can be pretty dark. It's just, fantasy lately has kind of had that bent. It's one reason I like Brian, or Brandon Sanderson. Because he kind of avoids it. He's pretty good. Uh, he's kind of like my decompress from uh, George R. R. Martin. Reading. Yeah, Martin can get kind of weak. You reading Mistborn? Yeah, yeah, I just started it. I just finished uh, Final Empire on audiobook. Cool. I'm listening to uh, Alexander Hamilton's biography since I'm teaching the musical right now. Sorry to derail. Just fanboying a little bit over the book. <laughs> I, um... Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, I'd say my number one thing in that is under-preparing or over-preparing. I'll either do one or the other, which is kind of weird, I know. Like, I'll over-prepare to an extent, and then it doesn't matter, so the next game I'll under-prepare. If I'm DMing. You know, that's why I don't mind doing one-shots, or... I just, just I have a hard time finding a consistent game to DM. I've wanted to DM uh, Avernus for a long time since it came out, but I've never had any luck. When the quarantine started, I was DMing a game, but there was several breakups within that group, so it died. Yeesh. Indeed, yeesh. Anyway, so I mean, y'all played with me. What do you What do you think a bad habit is? I have. Um, I would say you know whenever that you were, you know whenever that we were doing that the water deep game. Oh yeah, by the way, hi guys. It is a uh, Spence Ninja Spence speaking. Uh, that you were basically that. I would say if that anything that you don't necessarily try in a sense to kind of like oh how can I put this it's kind of like whenever that you basically like it kind of I kind of get that the sense that you want to take a character's backstory 
and you almost want to almost like basically, you know, take away an ability, you know, from them or something. Cause you know that the, that, you know, like Abby, she was a, uh, was she an arcane archer in that game? Yeah. That she was the arcane archer in that game. And then that, and then that I kind of felt like that you kind of wanted to literally take that. You literally wanted to take away her just arm. So that way that, so that so that way that that can kind of like negate the sharpshooter feet that I had on her. It's just up in the back of my mind. I remember, I don't remember trying to take the arm, um, but it's been a while. Uh, I mean, that was just flavor anyway. You wouldn't have, you would even if your arm disappeared, you still would have the cleave. And I probably wouldn't take an arm from somebody who's a, who's an archer. See, I wouldn't really good to know. I really wouldn't say it's a bad habit, but uh, like when you DM Nate or when you've played, I don't really notice bad habits. Not since we were kids, because back when we were kids, it was the let me try to kill another member of the party. But that was us being stupid and 15. But uh, like he said, with the grimdark, that's just kind of your flavor. I don't even really consider that so much a, uh, a habit. It's just that's kind of like, you're going to run that. I'm going to do something absurd. Your brother is going to do something kind of Cthulhu, creepy, body mm -hmm. horror-ish. So, I mean, and mm -hmm. Spencer's stuff has a little bit of flavor of uh, anime to huh? it. And I mean, that's, I don't, like I said, I don't consider that a bad habit. I just, that's just the flavor of game you're going to get with that DM. If that's maybe not what you're feeling that time, don't join the game is what I've told other folks. But Sometimes you really want Grimdark. Other times mm -hmm. you want to be able to shoot glittery lassos at people's face. <laughs> Fun. I'd say... Let me, let me talk about the only thing that really annoys me when I play games. How about that, too? And bad habits I've seen other people have. Not Can really in person. Is that Okay. Yeah. Yeah, like online really is where I see it more than anything when I used to play was people who had the protagonist syndrome when they played. You know what I mean? They're the main character. Exactly. And, and you know, I feel like D&D &D and any role-playing game really is a cooperative game. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's something everybody should enjoy. So when I'm DM and I want to make sure that everybody molds into the game. You know, I try to form the game around the party they make. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Keep the story kind of even. Like people can get, you know, a little arc or something or something special, but just kind of want to keep it even between everybody. That's right. But uh, I guess that's, that's all I got. I don't know if uh, you got anything else you want me to expand on. Mm, I mean, let's, there's another one you want to bring up. We can move on. Or Well, I'll say one thing I've been glad about is the rise of all the podcasts with role playing in it so people can actually see how to play. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that's one impediment a lot of people had in the past is one, there were gatekeepers to the game. Mm -hmm. Gatekeepers were not the most sociable, especially in areas like this. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. We're in the deep south, if you're listening. The very deep south. So, playing role-playing games as it is freaks people out. Yeah, the satanic panic for some people never went away. But uh, I guess that's all I got. I'll, I'll really push it to whoever wants to go next. Let me roll dice again. Okay. Mm, Spencer. Okay. Uh, I would say that one bad habit that I have as a DM before I go to player. Because as a player, that I really can't think of anything that I do do bad off of the top of the head. But I do know one thing as a DM that I do bad is I tend to scale back a lot of my encounters 
for just that the purpose of story because especially for like that since that you know that all of the players are here in a sense for like Stefan Carcass y'all should have really failed that uh Oda Wekin trip y'all should have failed that but I was like no do it for the story and then I was just like I kept on stretching it out and just like I really want y'all to fail, but I really want y'all to succeed too. So I basically, basically like gave y'all a win when, when in fact it should have been a failure just for that, the sake of a nature story versus then like letting y'all face that consequence. Because I think then that that would have changed something. And then if that's just kind of been like an innate fear of me of just having just basically Oh, that if then that they basically don't do anything to basically, uh, you know, save this person or whatever, whatever, it's basically going to be bad news bears for them. And then that I would have to basically DM in basically a automatic script, but I don't want to do that in a sense. Any thoughts or anything? It's important is being a DM is knowing when to fudge stuff too. Because like I said, it's a it's a cooperative game. You don't want to unless you're in a group that doesn't mind it. I've played with groups that don't mind being having like the brutality turned up. <laughs> but uh like back in the day I play have you ever heard of the Black Company? Those are those series of books? Mm-hmm. It's like no magic, no healing magic, rather. So you die real quick. I remember it was kind of a brutal game, so we'd all die. And that was fine. But, you know, some people want to play these games and not have to worry about that kind of thing. It's that kind of release. Some, you know, well, some, escape. People, some people just want the story, which <clears throat> I think it's fine to a point. But once you got to realize you are playing a game... You're eventually going to fight some. That's why you made a character that can fight things. Eventually, something's going to try and eat you or stab you. All right. Absolutely. Anything you got to say, uh, Mira? Ah, my my microphone cord keeps getting caught underneath my button. I think I know how it popped off during uh, the game last night. Now, uh no, like like Nate said, being a DM, the big thing is is sometimes you got to fudge it. And I'll be honest, uh, one of the ways I've been viewing games, at least for the last ten years, is the big point is to make sure the players are really enjoying the story and make sure that they're having fun with it. So that uh, so if you got to fudge something, do it. But at the same time, you can't do that every time. At some point, there has to be a consequence, especially in the situations for, like, if a rogue keeps stealing every damn thing, eventually right. there are consequences. Oh, yeah, like, absolutely, and then that, and then that as that my DM in career kind of improves a lot, I'm basically realizing, realizing that sometimes that, you know, I know how to create bad things that can outscale the players and which that that kind of leads me to like a up in like a pseudo kind of uh it's kind of it, it, it's kind of like neutral jing issue issue that i have whenever that i am a dm i optimize completely you know i that i basically create these wombo combo characters characters that basically be like, wait a minute, wait a minute, why does an artificer has two attacks? Well, well, most of us here know that, you know, you know, some, some either subclasses or else uh, that if that you multi-class in a say like fighter, monk, or paladin, or ranger, that they have the extra attack at fifth level. So I can optimize well as a DM, but as a player, I suck at optimization because that... One main reason that I don't, I, I really don't do adventure league games anymore is because that I was playing a forge cleric or some type of healing class. And then that, you know, like one, uh, and then like one of the players had got all scoldy and mad at me, like, bruh, 
why not just cast uh, Healing Word as your bonus action, and then you do a Cure Wounds as your action to heal me instead of trying to fight, you know? And then I, I was just thinking to myself, like, oh, yeah, that I, yeah, that, that yeah, that that's true. But it is also, it kind of made me, it had kind of put a bad taste in my mouth, and then just like, ugh. And then I, I even find myself doing that on like video game RPGs to where then that my bills sometimes may not be up, up up to snuff. I still get the job done, but it basically be a struggle. Now I get that because I'm like that too, especially with spell stuff. Hugh can tell you when we play our Tuesday night uh, game, I play a sorcerer at least once a game. I ask if. I can do this spell as bonus action and still cast something else or something like that. I'm not very good at optimizing. I'm better than I used to be, but I do it in D&D because, and I do it like you said in video games, like in Dragon Age, you can do so much in Dragon Age. I just end up hitting things with my weapon. I could probably be casting magic and doing other things. I'm just, and especially Dragon Age Inquisition, where you can like command people where to go. I'm like, Iron Bull's gonna go hit that guy, Varric's gonna shoot that guy, and I'm gonna go beat that boss in the face. That's what I'm doing. You should really check out um, Pillars of Eternity. I think you'd like it. I don't think I've heard of that. It's, oh, uh, no. Um, to cast a critical role, they do the uh, voices for like the characters, and uh, basically it's a Baldur's Gate clone, in the one and two, and uh, you know you get that that experience and optimization. It's always easier to, on the computer to optimize your characters because when I'm playing with friends, I care more about like the that experience than I do. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. But do you have any other ones you wanted to mention, Spence, before we move to Hewitt? Not necessarily right now that we can move on to Hewitt. All right, hun, what you got? Uh, one of the bad habits that I have as a DM and as a player, and I've been trying to fix it in Spencer's game, is I don't take notes. Uh, when I DM, a lot of it's improv because... Uh, I got tired of being accused of railroading early on by folks. When I first started playing, I was like, I didn't think I was railroading. I just had a story planned. But since it was that way, my reaction was, all right, well, then I'm going to improv most of this. There's a rough storyline outline. Uh, but all of a sudden, y'all go into a shop. I don't got a name for that NPC. And then I forget to write down that NPC's name. And then I have to ask somebody next session or they just get a new name. Uh, I'm, I'm really bad about not taking notes, uh, especially as a DM, because I want the flow to keep going instead of me stopping and having to write something down. Uh, I'll tell you one thing that's great, or like the $2.99 bundles on DM's Guild of just random NPCs. I've used that before, and it, it's fun. It gives you like a one-sentence description, what kind of shop they have. And boom, when you can do graphs and tables, you already have a ton of graphs and tables there. Yeah, I got that's what the thing is, is that I know when you walk into the magic shop that you're gonna deal with an odd wizard. I just don't have a name for them, and then I forget that. Like and even if I had cards down, I would probably still forget uh that NPC's name. I have to const. I do have to write down all the players' names because, unlike some DMs, I don't remember that crap. Uh, I'm, I am terrible with names just in general in life. So oh, I have, I have, huh? I'm teasing you. So I have to. So I have accidentally called characters by the wrong name before. Um. Uh, the, the worst habit I've had as a DM, and I am still currently working on it, though, is uh, I will run a game even if I'm not having fun running it because I want everybody else to have fun. So I have more than once forced myself to run a game and it was passable, but everybody could tell I wasn't having fun and that definitely killed part of the experience so I've learned to actually say no 
to running games when I'm not feeling like it so that I can actually give 100% the next time we actually do run it. Instead of just saying, oh no, if I don't run this right now, people are going to get upset and not have fun or not want to keep playing. Uh, instead, I've said, well, if that's the case, they didn't want to play anyway, so I'm going to take this time for me because if I don't, what I do is going to suck. Yeah, then I can oh, definitely find... Oh, sorry, go on. I just what he does never sucks. Oh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, that you know that all of your games are great, that the games that I've been in, that your voices are excellent. I think that you keep us engaged to that, the point that we are all just having fun because that we break you almost every game. I mean, that we had literally caused family court in that one shot, a monster of the week. Y'all did cause Satan and Lilith to have to go on Judge Judy. Judge Joe mm -hmm. Mathis is just like, just like what in the world is going on. on. You, uh, you are also probably the most experienced DM of the cruise by far. Yeah, that, yeah, just yeah, by that, hours, really number of hours doing it alone. Yeah, that. But back to you, your first point about like basically uh, re for basically forgetting NPC names and such. A big tip that I always do that you that you notice. Let's just uh, use just my game for for example that you are like the magic shop with that the intern. I create a weird quirk associated with that because then that that that's Taisha stick. It's based. I mean, not Taisha, Motisha, or Mott for short. Short that her stick is basically that she is basically. Like that this Twilight Elf that is basically using interns to try out her new magical flavor for good she creates and stuff. And then that there is a new turn every time. I mean, that there is a new intern every single time that you go in there, in there. So think about like the old G4, you know, with just the interns from X-Play. That that's kind of where God. I got that idea from. Oh, God, G4. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then that they are coming back this year. Yeah, even though yeah, they don't get the table. But yeah, that for, it was off the top by the time it was off the air. Right, right. But I would just say for you, Hewitt, to remember NPCs, give them some kind of quirk. Or you know that that's that that's why that I made Cascajaro sound like a name that who shall not be mentioned. And then I'm not talking about Voldemort. He just is an orange Cheeto. And we are moving on. <laughs> uh, let's see. Another bad habit I have uh, that hasn't really super come into play. Uh, I've actually done pretty good with this one is I have a habit of killing off party pets and party tag alongs. Yep. Uh, out of the fact that I do not want to constantly play an NPC as a, uh, I personally hate babysitter characters. Uh, if, if anyone watches our other games, you would know I tease him about this all the time. Because <laughs> it's been a thing for him for years. I, I really don't like babysitter characters of, you know, oh, well, I'm the DM. I'm going to create this blank, blank NPC that does blank and blank because I wanted to play this character and never get, the, I, I don't. I don't like doing that. The only time I'll have a babysitter is like, oh, everybody made wizards. Okay, I'm going to give you a meat shield until you get to level three or four when you have enough HP to not die from, you know, drinking too heavy one night. Uh, so I really don't like those. And if I end up with one, I try to kill them off. Um, but like. You uh, don't want to sprinkle uh, in the party? No. No, Sprinkle's dead. That is just that is an imaginary frame for Jester now. But uh Sprinkle's uh, a lich. <laughs> uh, I was gonna kill off Isilgard in the Arax campaign that predates <laughs> that didn't work. Uh kill off uh, an NPC from before we really started streaming in a, a three, four year long D D campaign, but the party decided no, and then he ended up becoming a noble. So and then they took him everywhere like he was their mascot i could not i could not get rid of this character so Knox likes to make the joke that i got to play that campaign too but uh also i mean the thing about D, D is if you kill a familiar you can always bring it back but games like exalted 
I hated familiars simply because they had three health. And that's something I got to keep up with because the players would forget about it. And it was just easier to kill it off and be like, there you go. Didn't Nate have a cat or something when you guys played Exalted? Like he had like a lion or something like that? I think he had a mountain lion. I did not kill that one. That was when Noah was still running the game. Oh, that's right. I don't think he. I don't think he ever died. We just stopped playing. Yeah, but it. I get accused of killing familiars, and it's true because it is less for me to keep up with. That's why whenever someone plays, like I have this little familiar, I'm like, oh, you're gonna be sad. Uh, now, as a player, my bad habit is. Uh, I inadvertently kind of become like party dad. Like no matter what character I'm trying to play, I always end up shifting towards that chaotic good alignment and trying to make sure everybody survives simply so the players can keep having fun because they like that character. Because usually in games, I am the person who's played the longest. So... It's one of those, like, I'm in a game, like, at the game store, and we used to go up to A&H and play, uh, and the party would switch in and out. I was like, I had this idea to play a death cleric charlatan who ended up adopting a ghost and co-parenting it with a tiefling that left the game, and then ended up getting all the pets from everybody else, and then constantly became the reason why people were not dying. So, it... No matter what I play, like even in Chris's game, Aldrich, Aldrich was supposed to be this little asshole, but now he's really the heart of the party that's trying to make sure nobody runs off and does anything stupid and dies. So, and it, that is my bad habit as a player. I wouldn't necessarily call that a bad habit, but I do get your point where you're coming from because that it makes you feel like that you have to basically become the de facto leader and then take care of take care of that the two t- Baxi twins that are basically always running off getting getting into the random pub fight and always getting arrested and then you're like uh, I gotta pull from the party funds to get these two smucks out but yeah that I can completely relate to where you are coming from from because that it makes you feel in a sense that that you just don't get to like let loose, and then that that the way that I see Hog Paul is that I see him as the leader for say, but not necessarily. If that anything, I would say that that it is out of Tum Tums and Ari, Ari, and then that Hog, and then that you know that all now that all y'all have qualities of a leader, but I would say if that I now that I would say that if that the Elderberry Dragon Company had basically a leader, a face man, it will be Ari. Public relations. Ari is, Public <laughs> Ari is definitely the face person. But I mean, like when Ari asked Hogpaw if he was the boss, I'm sitting like, am I playing Hogpaw like he's the boss? Because Hogpaw is not the boss. Hogpaw dumb. Hogpaw very dumb. Technically, I asked that because you, I thought you hired me. To work with you. <laughs> I think we all hired you. Like I, the way Hog, the, I'm going to say this: Hog Paul looks at the company as we all have a say. We all have a vote, and more than likely, he will float along with what everybody else decides, unless he just thinks it's really, really bad. Thinking he's also the one that's stuck an artificer's cannon into a bag of holding. So, mm-hmm. well, I was just. It was just because uh, I, I thought technically I was like a junior member or, or whatever. It's cool. By the way, I, I've been having to go back and look. I have to relearn. Mm-hmm. Art, I have to go back and relearn Artificer because of uh, the newest set of rules that came out about uh, Tasha's. Yes, that Tasha's. That I am using Tasha's rules for that. But but yeah, I mean, I think it's time. Oh wait, sorry, that I'm not the host. <laughs> No, you're not, Spencer. God. <laughs> um. Honestly, honestly, a lot of my bad habits are the same as you. It's <laughs> you take more notes than me. You give more notes. 
which we one of the reasons I don't have to take notes in our Dresden game is because you give us so many detailed things for characters, but I am not a note taker. And sometimes I don't take notes specifically because it doesn't fit with a character. Like when I was playing my uh, Bugbear Rogue Mal in our game at uh, the game shop, Mal is dumb as hell. Mal is a big, stupid, uh, neutral, evil bugbear who is supposed to be a thief, and I tried one time to steal something, and I got caught the one time I tried to steal something. That's because you tried the steal from Jalaxel. I also rolled a five. <laughs> if I rolled high, I probably could have done it. But Mal would not take notes. Mal wouldn't remember things all that much. He had random moments of wisdom, but he wasn't... With my sorcerer, Nasra, who is an SMR sorcerer noble, she should probably be taking notes. She should probably remember more things than I do, but I, I think I've, it probably connects to my ADD. That I just don't... I write down my equipment. I write down important items I get. I very rarely write down names. <laughs> I don't even tend to write down what our mission is at that moment. And I'm actually, I'm pretty good at remembering things. Unless we get to higher level, like with uh, Arlana, my my ranger in Lost Seas. She's got so much stuff. And I do have it written down is the problem. And I still forget that she has all these advantages and I don't freaking do The armor of healing wounds. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I re for I remembered that what like three sessions into season two. Uh, no, you remembered it in episode eight, which is one of the ones I just edited to put up. Okay, oh, sh shut up, shut up. <laughs> she has a but, plus, she has a plus one set of studded leather armor that has three charges of cure wounds in it. And I also have cure wounds, but I forget that I have the armor. So yeah, but uh, yeah, that seems like an important item. <laughs> oh yeah, I forget hunters mark all the time. I forget that I get advantage on initiative rolls. Like <laughs> what I like to do with abilities, I forget like that. I'll, I'll make a little post-it note that tells me, "Hey, you need to do this." Well, see, it's all on roll twenty, and I do have these things on my character sheet, but there's so much that sometimes I miss things. Because I have like the whole description of what it does in there, and I forget that it does certain things. But that note taking is definitely a bad habit, or not taking notes is definitely a bad habit. And kind of like how, sorry, kind of like how Hugh said he becomes team dad. I tend to go mom, <laughs> and like I, I will intend for a character to be a certain way. The only time I've really stuck with it pretty good is Mal, the bugbear I mentioned. But not as much as I wanted to because I wanted him to steal things left and right. But I also didn't want to get the party in trouble and we were not very high level. So I didn't want us to get ganked by a bunch of guards. So we'd go in somewhere I'd be like, oh, there's a bunch of stuff to steal. But I wouldn't try it because I didn't want to mess up what everybody was doing. <laughs> Even though the best, the best games are when you just uh, do it. <laughs> right. I know, and I keep trying to make myself. And like, I got. Then I don't I, mean I, anything about what I'm about to say, but you are a very. Uh, that's not in your DNA as a person. Yeah, that's part it's of it. Kind of hard for you to. Yeah. It is so hard for me to play a chaotic character. Like, uh, the character after that, Caitlin, my uh, fire Genasi monk, is supposed to be. I meant for her to be way more spontaneous than chaotic. And I sometimes I got that, and sometimes I didn't. But I was trying. I tend to try and babysit the party when I'm playing. I do it with Nasra, my sorcerer. I do it with. Like, in our Dresden game this morning for several years. I never intended my character, Sybil, to have a temper. Ever. I intended her to be, like, this cool, calm, and collected, um, you know, person, because she was basically an ambassador for the White Council of Wizards. And that went out the window so fast. <laughs> like, she's... She gets mad so often, and I get mad, and I think it's just... I kind of turned into my character being done with people's bullshit, basically, at that point in our life. But I tend to babysit the party, like, okay, let's not do this. 
so we don't die or we need to keep going come on and i need to fall out of that because i tend to fall into the same thing with every character i do also people other and everybody else likes to be the chaotic crazy ones and then it's like okay if one of us isn't then we all gonna die and i don't want to die I mean, that just basically just comes to just uh, both uh, the you and Hewitt's experiences of playing, playing, and you know, especially whenever then that I was running games at the, the local library before COVID, 12 player campaigns. No, especially with teenagers that they just only just care about like Fortnite and anime. That there, that there was, that there, now that, now that there was this one kid, kid, he would always be a tiefling and always say that his father was Satan. And I'm like, tieflings, Satan can't be your father, but whatever. But it, it's just, anyway, then he would just do the same archetype of just try to always have protagonist syndrome. And then that everybody else in the party would just give them crap about it. Even that I started to, as just like in, you know, like in, you know, like in character, because that, you know, that you can make a character sound that ridiculous in a sense. But I do 100% feel that if that you have basically that you feel like that you want to just cut loose and stuff. And then that that is why as a DM that I don't say no. So if that, uh, let's just say, for example, during that this hopefully next uh, downtime that the party has, that Tom Toms and Hog Paul are going to get are go are just going to get really turned up on on now that on some ale because I feel like that they need to after this. Probably. So that the only thing that I would just say to just rectify that is just to basically just as Nate as just to Nate as just Nate says, say just go that you know like go for it because that all four of us here are that the practical DM that will just basically just be like, I just want to go jump off a building and then we'll be like, we will see how that'll work out <laughs> instead of just a flat out no. Because that I think then that that is not a problem that that I personally have, but a problem that that, you know, could that, you know, that could basically be kind of like discuss a, 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 a little bit as far as in like a, that the DM that 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 says no. I just think then that that just kills the player's creativity. And then that that is also, as that Hewitt said, that that is entering to railroad territory. You know, that there is a fork in the road, road that has some bramble bush owned at the left, that there is a clear, plain as day path, and then that there's fog. But then that the DM would be like, well, you can't go down that one because they're doing construction with that the bramble and then that the other one is just basically it's just the fog is so dense it is like a invisible video game glitch wall so you only got to go straight well that if that you are just going to make us go straight dm just say we just go straight don't even just don't even include the fork in the road yeah i did that a little bit last night in the game with trying to get him to go in the tent Last night, with the it's girl. different. It's different with a one shot, though. Right. Like because with a one I, shot, I, you have a limited amount of time. I was trying so hard not to do it because I I was trying to take the advice from Hewitt and others to heart. Like, don't marry yourself to how you want something to go down. But I'm like, I need to get them in the fucking tent. And if they don't go in the fucking tent, they're gonna wander around this carnival, and that's gonna waste so much time because we're we're already running really really late. So I'm like. I just I'm I was trying to not make it super suspicious I, I, like any more than already was, but like I kinda had to make them go in there. <laughs> you know? And I was trying so hard not to. I mean that sometimes as a DM that you have to do that. I mean that the only way that I would say to rectify that, find that is basically it's kind of like you have to give some sort of indication of like 
basically something is off. Just how like whenever that, even though that, you know, that it has been a while that the party has not met Stefan Carcass in a while, but whenever Hawk Paul first met him, met him, I had just noticed that I had just said like one thing and then it, and uh, then at that guy Hewitt's mind spinning like is that this guy a vampire what's going on and then that all I did just say that he just got some very very sharp sharp just canines that's all yeah and I I, I think I kind of did that it's, it was just some of the party was going to go and some wasn't and I was like come on you little cowards get in there I don't want to I didn't want the party to split up at that point because I didn't want some people in there and end up facing the bad guys, and then them, I'm me having to make them get all the way in there when stuff was already happening. <laughs> it was like I want you all there at one time. Go. But again, I, I am very. I, I don't really have established bad habits as a DM because I've only DM like twice. So hey, it's understandable. We that we learn something new every day as soon as we DM. But. Um, and again, I, I have like what Spence said about optimization, so mostly in video games. I, uh, I also tend to hoard things in video games <laughs> for way too long. Like, I'll get to a higher level. I'm like, why do I have all these like level one axes? I don't need them. <laughs> Might have needed them at some point. I don't need them now. <laughs> but... We've gone about 40 minutes. Does anyone else have anything they want to mention? Uh, I guess we should mention what is like our biggest pet peeve at a table. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll start. That's, that's a good one. note. And uh, sure. it's, not, it's not one I've ever had personally at one of my tables. Uh, when I'm running, it's happened when I've been a player in John's game at the game shop. Or I've seen when other games were running at the game shop. Someone just one of the players turns around to somebody not in the game and just starts having a conversation. Uh, especially when it was still back at uh, Second Home Gaming, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a group of three guys that showed up and then made it to one or two at A and H. Uh, but they would just all of a sudden either start having a conversation amongst themselves that was out of game, like loudly talking over what everyone else was doing. Or would like turn around and just start talking to somebody else. Like playing in another game. Playing in another game. And like you could also tell the person playing the other game was really annoyed. But the, the, these three that would show up. Uh, well, one of them was okay. He one, played the game for a while. Yeah, he played for the game a while. But there was a couple, two of the three definitely were the old school uh, kind of gatekeeper y. Which was weird because they were younger than us <laughs> yeah, <laughs> by a bit. Was, yeah, it was it was weird, but one of the guys was really bad. Or the, the, the one that really cinched it for me to where I was like, yeah, if I was around this table, I'd have to ask you to leave is the DM, John, was talking to another player. And then this guy just started trying to have a conversation with John about something not connected to the game whatsoever. But something about Warhammer. And like wouldn't stop until John said, Hey man, after the game, I can talk to you about this, but right now we're playing and I'm helping the, uh, we're going through this character doing this. I did end up killing him later though. So yeah, you, you, you're responsible for, I think two of his characters deaths. I am. Cause he played edge. <laughs> he tried to play edge Lord Ang and it, yeah. it, did not, it did not go well. Uh, it's because he got, sp he got spiders and shit sent after us. Yeah, if you uh, hadn't killed him, I was going to. I don't think I don't technically kill him because I I killed him as Mal because Mal technically wasn't Mal anymore. But I also did whoop his ass. But um, I think it was more like I left him to die because I was like, oh, you want him here? Okay, bye. Oh yeah, with <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. You left. You traded Edgelord Ang. <laughs> I was I just like, we don't want him. 
I am just picturing like Aang is basically he just went to Hot Topic. He got just the black pants, the chain wallet, the black eyeliner, and then that instead of and then that he just painted his feet black. He got the black arrow tattoo. That's exactly what it was. It, and pretty, uh, he was he and was the guy that a, was and he was playing a drow oh. is the other thing with it. And he, oh he, no, he said, "Yeah, I'm from one of the families down here. I'm from one of the local families." But, goes, All right, pick well, one. What was what was funny was John was like, "Which one?" He's like, oh, "I don't know." And he's like, "Okay, great. You're from the one that's currently attacking you, and they want you back." Yep. Man. Yeah, it was no. He picked that house and he goes, "Well, that's the house that actually has the patrol coming after you, and that means that you are runaway." Which means I don't, I don't think that John planned that though. When he said it, he was like, "Okay, this is the house now." Yeah, but it was uh, like that. Just frustrated me. Like at first, I thought it might be the dude had ADD or something like that. Really bad. No, it turned out that he was just no, it. He probably it was more or less that he was just rude and He's kind of an I, asshole. Yeah. Like he he wanted to kill Mal right off the bat simply because Mal was a bugbear. Why do why do new players think it's always about PvP? <sighs> I would never ever understand that. But that that's one thing I don't like is that I don't like people who like have feel like they have to be in conflict with the rest of their party for some reason. And I've seen it and that guy was a good example of it. He always had to be bugging somebody. Yeah. That Nate can go before me. Uh, maybe, maybe, uh, I don't know, back to the protagonist syndrome thing, you know, where somebody won't let anybody else talk or participate, talks over people. You know, I'd say just that. It's the only thing that really pops out in my head compared to what we've already talked about. Okay. Uh... Yeah, that, uh, as for me, I got two of them. One of them is actually, I have a pet peeve of, uh, basically the third that, you know, that the first pet peeve is whenever you have a player that wants to try to break your campaign. I am not talking about like a module module or anything like that. I have a pet peeve whenever it comes to a homebrew campaign, because because that I was trying to run this that you know that the game that I am running now for team bonus action and then that we made it up to level 9 but that I had okay this player playing this uh class from DM's guild called the Pugilists which is basically a strength based monk and that the player out of game had basically told me that Told me that you know that I that you know that I am planning on breaking your campaign, and then that I did not believe him at first, and then that his uh, wife, who was also in the game, had even said that like, oh yeah, that my husband is trying to break your game. So he broke that he had broke the game to the point to where I had to change up so much of a later part, and I actually had to cancel a session because that. I was so infuriated to that the point of it kind of like shattered my my DM's knowledge and in that I was just like I just have to make up an excuse about like family that you know that it was just some family issues and stuff came up and I just basically just had to just like take just like another two weeks to like get back up into that mindset of like you can do this you can do this and then it's just was just so, you know, soul crushing to me in a sense. And then I, I'm like, I don't mind the aspect of someone breaking the campaign or else breaking the story because I, I don't want to come off as a railroad DM, but I also don't want them to break something that someone had put their heart and soul into. Like, I don't like that. I don't mind if the campaign is bent. If it is broken, it's just broken. And then that it just it it just creates more prep work for your for your DM to have to do that, especially if it's a homebrew. That's just kind of a butthole thing to do, personally. I mean, how was he gonna break it? I'm just curious. Okay. 
Okay, and so a little bit of backstory here that this was whenever I was first really getting into the hobby. So I still didn't get my feet wet into DM to to like dungeon mastering like I am now. That they that they had basically made it to the section where you guys may be making it to, and then that you know that they had made it to uh, dual soul. And then that they were basically at the marketplace or whatever. And then that I was doing this billing that, you know, that this Bill and Tan bit of uh, basically that these two artificers are like, <laughs> yeah, bro, that we are selling these, uh, that the magical items. But I made a DM faux pas. I sold a belt of storm giant string for 20, for 2,500 gold. And then, that, and I then that I did not catch his wife asking me, are you sure? You want to do this. She had did it up in that voice that, you know, whenever you're trying to give that final warning before it's like said and done. Like, are you sure you want to do this? And I'm like, yeah, a hundred. That's the right price. Yeah. <laughs> but the character basically could not get hit. Not even whenever he, that that his natural ones were still even good hit, hit in combat. Like, it was just a ridiculous class that he had optimized it and min-maxed it to the point to where that he actually made the campaign unfun for everyone, even the DM. Yeah, dude, I would have just made it a cursed item something. <laughs> I don't know, man. That sucks. Yeah, and then uh, another pet peeve was with the same... Uh, with just that... With, ju with just that the same guy was that... He was a mega rules lawyer. Like, you know, like when that, you know, like whenever that I ask for advice and stuff because that I am not well versed in, versed into the rules and stuff, then that, that's fine. Fine. But he would argue me on every single thing. Yeah, well, that's the kind of thing you're like, oh, well, this is my game. I'm the DM. I'm in charge. But I know as a new DM, you know, too, you said you were just starting out. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was just to the point that where then that it was getting frustrating and very highly upset. I mean, granted that the dude is cool out out outside of games, but but for him to just you know that just as y'all say it said it said then that that was a dick move for him to do. And then that I did have that other pet peeve. Pee, what was it? What was it? Oh, what was that other pet peeve? Uh, somebody, some, somebody else can go can go on while I just try to just go back for that for just that other one. Yep. Excuse me. Uh, I already said the one big pet peeve I have. Yeah, I don't have one either. Um, mine. One of mine is kind of like with Spencer's. It's. There's people that play a chaotic character and play into that, and it can cause problems. But people who intentionally try to derail a game, I think, and Cole's kind of done it before when he's played with us. <laughs> Not that bad. Um, Ty's done it. Like, he intentionally does... And Ty is more that he is, hadn't really played before. And he just wanted to do something cool or something silly. But there's some moments in a game where just trying to be totally random or stupid or goofy is going to wipe some... hurt somebody, wipe somebody out, is going to derail what the party's trying to do. And in some cases, that can be good for story. In some, a lot of cases, it's like... What was even the point of that? You know, that I don't understand why people do it. I mean, I'm too much of I want to keep the party on track and I don't want to cause problems for the party. But the extreme of that is also very irritating to me. Also, people that are just dicks. <laughs> yeah, do you think that it can be basically for like the, the cool factor? In that the sense of, you know, like, basically, you know, you know, like, 
it, it's basically that you are trying to be funny, you know, that they, that you know that these problem players are trying to be funny, but then that they end up doing more harm than humor. Yeah, I mean, and sometimes it is something that's funny and something that really doesn't hurt anything in the game. And sometimes, you know, players are going to do things that disrupt a game or they're going to change how the game is played or the goal of the game. Hewitt knows that very well. Um, but, yeah, but trying to be funny and then it coming off just ending up hurting the game you know and sometimes people don't do it intentionally but sometimes people do do it intentionally or just seem like they want the party to have problems like it's one thing to do like what I did with Mal and wanted to steal things sometimes because the background is a thief mm-hmm. and then there's out of nowhere having a paladin go up and punch a guard in the face for no reason Having a paladin keister a necklace of fireballs. Okay, that was funny. That that didn't derail anything. That was just weird and funny and fucked up. I was just trying to mention something that was silly that was done, because that was... And then wanting to stand next to everybody while still holding three beads of fireball. In, See, that, in that, that's funny. You know, it's kind of gross, but it was funny. But... It's not like he stood next to people intending to blow himself up and someone next to him, you know? I can get that, especially if, like, you're just coming in as a guest player or if you're just hopping into it for one session and then you're going to go. Like, other people have more, you know, uh, dedicated to the game or have more invested in the game. And if you just decide to start a dumpster fire and bounce, that's kind of a cruddy thing to do. Now, yeah. if, if it happens just because of actions, that's one thing. But if you intentionally go in trying to wreck a game like that, that's just a butthole move. Yeah, that's and the intention behind it is what makes the difference. If you go in there acting as your character would act, and you end up causing you know a shitstorm, that's one thing. If you go in there trying to be a shithead just because you want to be a shithead, then that's not fun anymore for anybody else. It might be fun for you being a shithead, but no one else enjoys watching you do it. And that is exactly how that the first ever campaign of the Revenge of Stefan Carcass ended because that they because then that it was a large group that they were getting frustrated with my combat style because that combat took so forever because then that I would always use max stats on health because that I as that y'all know I run pretty tough encounters but for but for just at the sake of team bonus action I have started you know using just average average stats or so so that way then it's not dauntingly long combat but it was like that this one scene in particular that this guest character used polymorph and basically turned you know them two players into a T-Rex. Then I'm like, is this legal? And then that he also had a staff of power, which just basically destroyed the entire battlefield, killing half of the party. Then I'm just thinking to myself, like, you really did break the campaign. And then it wasn't no like huge uh, fallout or whatever. Then that they, then that, you know, that they just lost interest in it. And then that, you know, what that the crummy thing was that I understand 100% completely that if that, you know, that the spouse would take the side more of the the spouse than just like a random stranger. But whenever that I had expressed my concerns to, to that, you know, that the player's wife, it didn't feel like she came off as apologetic in a sense for his actions. If that you get what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So then it, what if just anything that I guess then that that'd be a, like my last pet peeve, especially is just basically try not to basically optimize to the point of where then that you are going to intentionally break the game with just your DM knowledge. Separate that you got to separate that knowledge and, you know, do what your character would do. Because the pugilist uses fists and stuff. You know, that you only got like one magical item. 
item, but you know, you should that uh, you shouldn't be like telling telling like everyone at the table how to play their role. You know, like that this the spells you need to do to basically do all of this stuff. It's just like you are just making a Bill Murray character at the point and then that you are not making it fun anymore because that you have so many interruptions and then it's like like your turn doesn't need to take ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all have legitimate pet peeves and legitimate bad habits. But is there anything anyone else wanted to mention before we uh, signed off for the night? Uh, Nate, uh, um, drop a. Sure. Uh, I, uh, I have a painting Instagram where I post the uh, miniatures with paint. I'm uh, updating it two, three times a week. I'm kind of speeding through what I have. I'm working on a uh, Nurgle army, so they're all gross and pus filled. So I'll be posting that soon. That's Nate Paints Warhammer. Nate Paints Warhammer, all one word. And that might did I misunderstand you? No, no, no. Oh, okay, and that, that you know that my name is Spencer, otherwise known as a uh, Ninja Spence. Current, currently, that I am uh, working on a new monster of the monster of the week uh, storyline that I will be uh, debuting sometime, uh, sometime up in basically. Uh, I want to say early April, hopefully, hopefully. So then that you can also follow me on Twitch at the same handle. Handle that I do art streams sometimes, and I will play Dark Souls and stuff. You can just come and just hang out with me and stuff while I basically play games and just come and just chill. All right, Mira. Uh, anything I do, you can find on Team Bonus Action. And uh, see, I'm gonna have family in this week, and Vincent's got a doctor's appointment later this week. So I don't think we're going to be able to do Stefan Carcass uh, this week simply because we got to get him ready to be in Jackson early Friday. So uh, I think this might be the only thing we got going up this week. Unless someone wants to run something else on Thursday. But uh, that that's all I got. Um, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Nate, if you weren't done. No, you're good. I didn't know. I, I didn't mean to interrupt if you were still giving your plug. Um, well, uh, I hope everyone who listened in enjoyed it tonight, and anyone who listens to this in the future enjoys it as well. Hope you liked us just shooting the shit, talking about pet peeves and bad habits. If you want to find us on Twitter, we are at bonus underscore team on there. We often post when we are going to be going live, we retweet stupid shit, and we put up previews of our next uh, big games. We uh, are on YouTube, and of course here on Twitch, under and on Facebook as Team Bonus Action. So hopefully people will give us a follow, give us a watch. And I think that that's all we've got for tonight. So as Knox likes to say, don't let your meatloaf. loaf.